local authorities had had a number of job evaluation schemes in existence that were discriminatory. And in 1986, they started talking to the trade unions about changing that and coming up with a scheme that wasn't discriminatory, that gave equal pay for work of equal value. We spent around 12 months working on that. And in 1987, we actually introduced the scheme and spent another 12 months implementing it across the, the patch. So that meant that everybody then, in theory, should have had equal pay for work of equal value, whether they were cleaners, domestics, catering staff, or highway staff, or refuse men. My grade, I, I had been a, road, a roadman for, since 1964. And the thing was that, that my grade, as, as Ray has just mentioned, was equal to uh, a, a grade to cook. It, it is a difficult one to get your head around. And we had these, it was before PowerPoint, so we had pre-prepared flip charts that we used to take around to the depots with us and start working through it. And trying to explain that you can compare a refuse person with a home health person using this scheme was quite difficult for people to grasp. Because their logic was, well, I'm out in all weathers lifting a bin and the home helps in somebody's warm, comfortable house just looking after granny. And you're trying to say, well, it's not like that. It's not as no. easy as that. You know, you know your job well, they know their job well. We've seen both of them. And you can use this scheme to compare them and grade them. I don't think that the concept of equal value is widely understood. I think the concept of equal pay for the same or similar work is understood. But the concept of equal value, I think, is something a lot of people in the trade union movement still struggle with. Yorkshire dinner ladies' wages being cut was part of a general downward pressure on women's paying conditions that arose from actually the Local Government Act 1988, which laid the way for compulsory competitive tendering, i.e. privatisation. Quality didn't come into it. They had to accept the lowest tender. So immediately this put an awful lot of pressure, particularly on the pay and conditions of women. And when North Yorkshire started doing that, to be competitive against the private companies, they started to cut the terms and conditions of the school mill staff to win the contract. That's one of the things that makes the case quite unique, because we already had equal pay, and what we were complaining about was the council taking that equal pay away from them, moving away from the job evaluation scheme. And it's, it's logic, it's, it's so simple when you look at it, and when you were trying to explain it to people, they said, look, 1987, they got equal pay. 1989, they took it off them. Tell me how that can be right. And that was the basic blunt argument. Mm. And people can understand that, which is why I think we've got so much support. Yeah. They actually just came in one day and said, your terms and conditions are changing, um, you're going to be £3 an hour, and that'll be it. Everything was taken away. The holiday pay and the um, laundry allowance, the bank holidays, there was all that was taken away. And um, I think we were given um, 14 days holiday a year. Years, yeah. yeah, and that was, that was it. So, you know, we'd, we'd, lost, we'd lost everything because we got paid through the holidays. I got 3.40 an hour at the time and uh, we got 30 pence cleaning money and we also got all the, you know, um, we got three weeks holiday actually, we got three weeks holiday then. So, you know, it changed drastically. It was a big and they removed the sick pay scheme as well. And the yeah, sick yeah. pay scheme, that all went, yes, yeah. There was no pension scheme, there was nothing. It took the lot away. I was a roadman, but at the same time I was the county convener for the highways department. And we'd been competing or going out to competitive tendering for a while, but we didn't lose any holidays, we didn't lose any rates of pay, we kept all our national and local conditions, our pension scheme was safe, and yet there was us tendering for work in the same way, but yet when it came to the school meals ladies, they were obviously having to uh, take all these cuts, which was totally unfair. We had roadmen, but their wives worked in school meals. So the argument came home. I mean, I mean nobody was happy about it, you know, mm -hmm. but nobody wanted to leave the job. I mean, we all liked the job anyway, and it's yeah. particularly the schools we were working for. Mm. We'd, you know, a lot of the ladies that worked with me had been there 30 years. So it was part of the life. They didn't want to change it. But so. that was the thing, was that the played on the emotional side of the school meals ladies because what they were saying was 
that, okay, we're going to implement these cuts and these changes, but they knew full well, because these were also mothers as well as being workers, and what they were saying to them was that we, we won't come out on strike, we, you know, they'll, they'll accept it because for the simple reason they won't see children go hungry in the schools. The moment when I definitely decided I was going to go ahead with it was when we were burgled at uh, school and I tried to get some money for petty cash for to do the school lunches and they said they couldn't do it and and I said why not and they said well they didn't have any bank accounts or anything it was um it was just a, a paper agreement to set up this business and I thought well and that is it obviously North Yorkshire still owners and it's still them and and I said it's just not on and um, and so that's when I said you know I've got to fight it because I said that it's not right that they can come along and just take everything away, fill a bit of paper in and say, oh, we've started a new company. Right. And, and, and that's all that was involved. Because everything, the overalls, the, the wage slip, nothing changed. It was still North Yorkshire County Council. I misunderstood the whole thing because all I thought was I had to put my name to a piece of paper. And then when they said, no, you've got to come to Leeds to a tribunal and I mean, get up to speed. And I thought, yeah. oh my God, you know, I mean, this just wasn't quite what I had in mind. <laughs> what got me fired then was that we were privy to the papers that had passed between North Yorkshire County Council and the in-house team. Mm. And this chap was, was only a young fella. I mean, he, he was only in his early 30s then, I think. And he'd written, in one of these papers, he'd written something on the lines of, well, these women only come out for pin money or pocket money. And he was sat directly in front of me as I was reading this in the tribunal and I thought, I'm gonna smack you. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you insult the ladies who were working? You know, and that, from then on, that's what got me fired. It was seen then as quite an important case that if we lost, there could be more serious consequences than within it, I suppose. So winning it became quite important to both the organisation and to the people in North Yorkshire because of the number of precedents it would set if we were successful. It also kind of shone a national line and from other councils we were encouraging North Yorkshire to fight, to fight it on the chance that we might have won it because it would impact on them as well. I thought that probably the tribunal, the industrial tribunal would come down on the side of the men's school of thought, if you like, um, and would probably favour the private sector I was wrong, pleasantly surprised. Uh, we lost the appeal, basically, and we kind of knew second day in that we were going to lose it mm. by a comment that was made by the judge that was hearing it. And I can't remember the exact words, but somebody mentioned um, the reliability of women workers and his comment was well yes they have headaches and things they're not as reliable as men are they and this was the guy that was actually hearing the case so we kind of knew when he said that that we're not sort of listening to the person who's sympathetic to our cause mm. one of the real big successes we made at the second stage of the appeal at the court of appeal and it doesn't really get used enough because it's still a legal precedent was that if the market discriminates then you can't use market forces mm. as an argument and what that tribunal basically says was, that's fine, use market forces, but if you look around, it's a predominantly female workforce, which catering is, and it discriminates as a market, then you can't use it as protection, which is what they were trying to do. We lost the first appeal at the Employment Appeal Tribunal. We then went to the Court of Appeal, which is the one you see on the television lot of the Strand, which was the second stage. Um, we lost that as well. <laughs> Bit disappointed with that. I thought we had a much better hearing, and the people listening to the case seemed to understand the arguments better. And we did establish that we lost the case. We did establish that comment on market forces that you can't use it if the market discriminates. We'd gone so far down the road then and were still confident that we were right that we knew we couldn't leave it there. So we appealed to the House of Lords. Somebody from the court rang us and told us on the train that we'd won it yeah. before we got there. Then somebody so met us at the King's Cross station, didn't they? Yeah. But the occasion of actually walking into the House of Lords yeah, was stay in my memory yeah. forever. That's and the, and the best was coming out. And there was just thousands of cameras. Yes, there, was, there was loads. There was people yeah. shouting at us from all. I mean, like you see on the TV, you know, when these politicians are there. Yeah. And it was just, we just couldn't stop laughing, could no, we? No, it no, just it was fantastic. set us off no. giggling. Yeah. I switched on the news that night to see Jin and the applicants on the telly coming out of the courts to find out that they'd won. And it was such a great, fantastic, fantastic feeling.
Yeah, it's something I'll, I'll take to the grave with me. It's uh, so, yeah. something yeah, that you can be fantastic. very proud of. But these two did that. Yes. It was these two that did that. And that's, did. You've got to get a kick out of that. Oh, yeah. 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 You created a legal yeah. precedent. You changed legislation. You mm. stopped employers from cutting pay to win contracts. You stopped them from using market forces as an argument to cut your pay. Mm -hmm. Think of that. <laughs> with, <laughs> with your help, though. Yes, yeah, yeah, with your help. With your help. Yeah. I mean, I would, your I wouldn't, support and everything, wouldn't yeah, I mean, yeah. we wouldn't have known where to start. Well, no. 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 Without the union behind us. You know. Oh, I mean, that's it, right. It was a good thing. Yeah. That's what I used to say to everybody, you know, join the union because if there's any problems, that's the only way you're going to get anything and sorted. Long time, I've got two really good friends out there. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah.